Hey guys, it's me, Timothy John Luke Smith. I thought I'd give a heart-to-heart uh, -heart talk this evening. I wanted to talk about me, the artist, why I became an artist, how I became an artist, and what that has meant in my life. Um, let's start from the beginning, when I was just a little guy. Actually, my earliest recollection is that I wanted to be an artist. I remember when I was a little kid, my mom used to draw these little fire engines with red ink on the envelopes of bills to keep me quiet. I was a sickly kid, had some intestinal things going on, uh, operations and whatnot. But I remember being so little, my earliest recollections, and I started drawing and I remember I was able to draw as good as my mom pretty soon. Everyone marveled. Then as I had gotten older, it seems all I wanted to do was draw. I drew on everything. I drew on spare pieces of paper, the wall, books. I would draw everything. People, dinosaurs, uh, Battle scenes of World War II was a favorite because of the John Wayne movies. And as I was a little kid, I would draw incessantly all the time. But when it came to art contests in elementary school, I never did well. I don't know. It's like it wasn't something that I could just turn on or turn off. It just came or it didn't come. It, inspiration came. I couldn't force inspiration. And that has been sort of a theme throughout my whole life. I can't just turn it on. I can't just say, hey, make magic. Magic has to happen on its own. And I do agree that inspiration does come at the easel when you're at the easel every day. But for someone to say to me, oh, go ahead and paint this has always been difficult for me. It's inspiration comes when she comes so I remember I moved from New Jersey to New York City Astoria Queens and that was kind of traumatic you know we lived in this affluent neighborhood in New Jersey and I remember it was pretty scary at first but turned out that the kids were nicer, the people were nicer, more down to earth, and I felt at home in New York City <laughs> rather than the affluent community that I lived in New Jersey. When I was in uh, junior high school 10 in Astoria, Queens, this one kid, we were in eighth grade, and in ninth grade he was going to this high school of art and design, and he told me about it, and I was like, what? A high school just for art? And he said, yeah, it's like four periods, five periods of art a day, and they have art lessons and painting and commercial art. That was it. And I found out that I was able to try out in my ninth year to be admitted for my 10th, 11th, and 12th and get my diploma there. I remember I got a part-time job across the street at a butcher shop and almost everything I made was for art supplies and video games, mind you, but art supplies as well. So I was getting these Walter Foster books on. I'm sure you've heard of them. Uh, oil painting, pen and ink, the female nude, anatomy, cartooning. So I had inside information from this kid that well, I had to create a portfolio. So I would go to school during the day in the afternoon, I would work at my part-time job at the butcher shop, and then at night, I would do my homework and then work on my portfolio. I remember I used to work on the dining room table after dinner when everything was cleaned off before I got, you know, my art supplies. So the next year came, it was December, and my brother Kevin took me, because I was only a kid, took me to 57th Street and 2nd Avenue in Manhattan, and I took the test. It was crazy because it was the first time where I actually was judged for my art in a serious way. And 
I had to actually do an entrance exam where we had to do these little drawings that they asked for, which was the opposite of what my proclivity is because propensity because it was always hard for me to turn it on and turn it off so I was worried and then I got into the high school of art and design and I was excited and it was great and I remember my family got all excited and they bought me this drafting table and a portfolio and all these art supplies and my aunt uncles mom dad everybody it was very exciting then I went to the High School of Art and Design that following September and I studied with this artist called Erwin Greenberg. Now he was this amazing painter. He taught oil painting in first and second classes, first and second, uh, yeah, first and second period. But what he also did was before school started about an hour and a half from 7 until 8.30 he actually would pose one of the kids as the model and we would work for the model in oil painting and Conte crayon and pencil and it was there that I discovered the love for tradition beauty and realism he was a great teacher and a great inspiration I also studied with Irving Doctor and he headed up the afternoon painting class, of course, posing the model, which was one of the kids. And we would work from the model from about 3.30 to 5.30. And I would do that. I would go to school early and I would leave late. And then there were other times where I actually would spend my lunch hour painting in that classroom as well. It was weird. I never had that kind of seriousness for anything else in my life, but for art it was so easy. Once in a while there was Max Ginsberg, a famous artist. He was there uh, in the mornings and it was great to watch him and he gave me some wonderful pearls of wisdom as a young kid. And I was just a serious young man, uh, maybe even more serious than I am today. And. I graduated high school there and it was a hard transition. I didn't know what to do. I just, so I got a partial scholarship to Southampton College, Long Island University in, in the painting program there. And I was getting wonderful grades, but I was very unhappy because I went from a world-class art department to a so-so university. The university is not the place to study art. So I still wanted my parents to be proud of me so I gave another chance and there was this artist called Daniel Chard at Rowan University back then was Glassboro College, Glassboro State College. And I went ahead and studied with Daniel Chard because I seen his work in American Artist Magazine and that was wonderful. And during that semester we would talk all the time. A lot of times I would be studying independently and he would come by the studio and talk. And one day I just told him, I said, this doesn't feel like it's the path to being a painter and I don't feel like I'm doing my talent justice or this burning desire inside me and he said you'll make that decision when you're ready and then about two weeks later I left and never came back when I got home that semester I w went ahead and started taking classes at the Art Students League in New York City and I was fortunate to study with George Passantino, who studied with Riley, which is part of the Riley method, which is a very structured method of painting. And don't get me wrong, it's a great method and the, the work is wonderful, but it just wasn't me. I wasn't happy. One day I was actually, after class, I was sitting on the bench 
in the waiting room or the main lobby of the Art Students League. And in walks Erwin Greenberg, my high school teacher. Tim, how you doing? Uh, I'm okay, just not too happy. I was a skinny little kid. And he says, not too happy? What's going on? I told him I wasn't excited about Passantino's class. However, I tried to get into Harvey Dinnerstein's class, who I really wanted to study with. But his classes was full. Faith would have it. Who walks in? Harvey Dinnerstein at that moment. Mr. Greenberg says, Harvey, come here. I have a student for you to meet. And we met. And it was great. He's such a nice guy. Me and Harvey hit it off right away. Then I, I uh, was sitting there. And Harvey and Greenberg were talking. And he said, can you get my student into one of your classes here at your Students League. And Harvey went on to say, of course, that his class was filled and there was this waiting room and he would like to. However, he did have a class that he was teaching in the mornings, Monday through Friday, at the National Academy School of Fine Arts, which is uptown around 89th Street between Madison and 5th. So I was excited that Monday I went there and I started taking the class and Harvey was very happy with my work and the level that I was at. And I started studying with him and with his recommendation I got a full merit scholarship. And for three years I studied with Harvey in his studio. Back then Harvey was one of the few artists doing pastels seriously, meaning pastels as a finished painting medium not some sketchy thing which are pre preparatory studies for oil paintings. So in Harvey's class I pretty much that was that was my my apprenticeship. Harvey was is my mentor. When I left there it was very difficult to make the transition from being in art school to being out there in the real world. When you're not in school, people expect you to make money. People expect you to be serious. In my 20s, I had a hard time being serious in that way. I had a lot of different part-time jobs. I, I worked as a waiter at Friendly's. I worked as a person developing film. I sold professional camera equipment in Orlando to tourists. I worked at a marketing company for hotel rooms. And this is all in my 20s. I also worked at Nextel in Rutherford, New Jersey. That was a full-time job. But Art is a jealous mistress. She will not let you love another. Mm -mm. It's just that's the way it is. It, those of you who know that feeling, you know what I'm talking about. It's this gnawing at you. It will not let you. So there was a time period when I actually stopped painting for a while. A lot of other things happened. My dad passed away and everything was up in the air. I moved back from Florida to New Jersey and just got further and further away from my art. And I got married and we were both artists and I was able to get back into my art seriously. I mean really seriously for the first time and actually started to become a full-time painter. It was great. Oh, it was beautiful. Painting all the time. I sold drawings on eBay to private collectors. It was just a lot of fun. It was, I really felt I was doing what I was supposed to do. But it wasn't enough financially. We actually had gotten evicted and I remember several people telling me to get serious 
and to give up this art thing because evidently it's not working. Had people tell me not to get too involved in my art. You know, how difficult is it to work so hard at something and have people say that to you? Do they say that to doctors, lawyers? Do they say that? You know? Do they work any harder than me in my art? Mm mm. They don't. They didn't. But I had to swallow that. So at that point, I got a full time job. And I've had that full time job for nine and a half years. And I even had other artists tell me that I'm not a serious painter because I have a full time job. Since then, I've gotten divorced and lost several cars, <laughs> used cars. It's been rough, but I paint every day. I wake up way early than I have to go to work so I can paint in the mornings. I draw on the trains to and from work. I try to do some artwork before I go to bed if I'm not too tired, but that's difficult. On the weekends, I try to do as much painting as possible. Truth of the matter is, I paint all the time because I have no choice but to do it. It's not about anything else. It's just about no choice but to do it. Like when I was a little kid, drawing in the red pen on those envelopes. So here we are today. Just letting you guys know that art costs. Art's not free. But why I'm doing this channel is that I want to share with you guys something that I love so much that I won't stop even if the world tells me not to get involved, get serious. I want to share that with you guys. I want you guys to experience that excitement I have when I go to the easel. I want you guys to produce work that exceeds your expectations. Art Art is a beautiful thing, but it's not, it doesn't come without cost. So anyway, that's my story, guys. Just wanted to let you know that uh, you're not alone out there. I understand your work. And this talk is for everyone, those who are musicians and rappers, poets, singers, photographers, writers, you have that same compulsion, that same jealous mistress, so to speak, that gnaws at you and doesn't allow you to put everything into something as practical as a nine to five. So, This is, my, this is my video channel. I hope you uh, subscribe and I hope you give feedback and hear from you if you have any questions and also hopefully you guys could share some inspiration. Maybe your art story. What made you become an artist? I'd like to know. So, all right guys, that's my that's my rant, so to speak. Take care. Bye.